Hi everyone, I'm Edward and I wanted to share how I practice still life painting. Recently, I feel like I made a lot of progress and improved a lot by speed painting from references and then applying what I learned by drawing from imagination or memory. I also give myself these days some time limits so I don't get caught up in the details and rendering. Usually, <laughs> in the past, I would spend many, many hours refining and adding details. But these speed paintings I did the past week, I spent around one to two hours and try not to go over that. But of course, <laughs> since I had to have it, some of them I did spend a little longer <laughs> because I made some mistakes. But I also tried to draw a bit larger from the photo reference to get better at proportion and also um, to prevent myself from just mindlessly copying the reference that I have a bad habit of just turning off my brain when I study and practice so forcing myself to draw a little larger then the picture really helps me um, with proportion since that's something I always struggle with and I don't have too much experience with still life painting, unfortunately. <laughs> Even though they will probably be so helpful in helping me learn how to paint better. I only did, I think, two of them digitally ever that I like would consider finished. Even though I did do a few of them traditionally for practice for my portfolio portfolio for art school and stuff in these old paintings like I was at a coffee shop um, with my French class when I studied abroad in Paris and I took this um, picture of the teacups and stuff and I remember spending like 20 hours just on that one and <laughs> it even come out that good back in the day and then for the fruit bowl one I spent like literally 100 hours on it i remember spending like three hours a day for a whole month on that one and i didn't really learn anything from that so back then it made me feel like it was such a waste of time and it made me hate studying because i thought it was useless but i was really wrong <laughs> so i feel like the most important thing for me to do now is to focus on quantity and take a quantity for his approach when it comes to painting in general instead of focusing on quality whenever i focus on quality especially when it comes to my personal practice i never learned that much from references by doing that but recently i have been trying to just produce more art even if it's not the most pretty looking piece or most finished detailed painting i made um, but i feel like I improve so much faster this way <laughs> by focusing on just creating more and recently I found out that when it comes to personal practice just drawing a lot helps way more than like focusing on quality and a lot of other artists always talk about mileage in art and it took me <laughs> until now to realize that all it means is focusing on producing a lot and that's like all it is and these days i don't force myself like i used to um to finish a painting perfectly especially from reference these days i just like i said <laughs> give myself a time limit if i force myself to continue when I don't really want to work on a practice painting anymore. I get kind of sick of drawing and avoid it altogether, which is really bad. <laughs> so these days I just let go of perfectionism and I feel like that really helped a lot of my passion come back for painting because I don't feel as much pressure on myself and that just makes me want to keep drawing longer um, instead instead of losing interest like when i get bored on a practice painting these days i just go to the next one or i just paint from imagination that helps a lot <laughs> also recently i found a lot of good references on Flickr, and i 
think Flickr has a lot of good references compared to Pinterest where I find references um, I always focus on finding pictures that I want to draw from but also ones that are beautiful and useful to me mm, so for me I always focus on trying to find pictures with good lighting and color so I could learn um those things because I find lighting and colors to be like the most beautiful things in art and I also do want to try to pick references that have objects that would be useful for me to learn for example like flowers food cups and plates those are all objects that I might draw when I I want to uh, illustrate a scene with my favorite characters at a restaurant for example mm, so I recently really do try to be more conscious of the pictures I choose because in the past I like this armor studies I never really applied the knowledge by drawing a character with armor yet so doing studies like that wasn't particularly helpful to me <laughs> in the past it was kind of like a studying for a test and then you forget it like a month later <laughs> you never use it again like the knowledge so these days I um, really try to ensure that every reference I practice from is is going to be more or less applicable to my personal art so it's not like a waste of time to practice and I also try to limit my brushes to just my favorite ones so I get more practice using brushes that I love especially the textured round brush that I made um, it was just a combination of a chalk brush and the standard round brush I really like it a lot <laughs> and I feel like limiting my tool really allows me to just focus on the bigger picture but I still think it's good to experiment and try out different approaches because maybe one day I might prefer another way of painting I did want to practice drawing more line art as well since I feel like I'm not the best at line art. I think I'm a lot better at painting and stuff but I really want to be able to draw well as well. <laughs> but yeah, I learned a lot the past week from painting all these still life references. The first thing I learned was reflections and like how objects could reflect light, the colors of the objects around them. I think it was really interesting to really learn about the reflection of objects since I feel like adding those tiny details would really bring my personal paintings to the next level and I was also figuring out the best workflow I think in one of them I messed up <laughs> the proportions because I didn't really feel like uh, spending too much time on the line art but that kind of backfired on me because I ended up messing up everything like the shapes and proportions so I learned how I shouldn't really directly paint I should always start with line art first to get everything right and then go into the details work and I also learned a lot about shadows and how they could be colorful too and they could something have interesting shapes especially the cast shadows and yeah I just learned a lot about lighting in general like how objects have sometimes highlights but for more matte textured objects the specular highlight isn't always there or super obvious but that's enough <laughs> theory that I learned now it's time to put everything in practice and apply everything so I painted two paintings from imagination I feel like I need to do way more though for next time but for this week I painted a still life of a uh, tomato and other objects that I bought from the grocery store the other day I wanted to add like a blue and white checkered tablecloth but I don't think it came out that well <laughs> it was from a, a restaurant I saw in the past 
I really thought the blue and white colors work really well together and I remember thinking that tablecloth was really beautiful when I walked by the restaurant going home from school in the past. <laughs> but I also wanted to uh, one day be able to draw everything from my imagination or memory just like Kim Jong Ki. He is like my idol in art and I'm still super far away from that goal but I know that as long as I keep drawing and practicing a lot I'll hopefully one day get it and recently I've been just thinking about his explanation on how he got better at drawing and what he used to do was he used to expand his knowledge one step at a time because he said that we can't draw what we don't know from our memories he used to say that we have to understand the objects we want to draw in order to draw it from our memory or imagination he used to obsessively draw like one thing over and over again until he could draw it from his mind and he would just constantly add one step at a time other objects until he accumulated such a large visual library and we Recently, I am trying to also expand my visual um, knowledge one step at a time and I'm trying to draw objects that I kind of never drew before as well to test the boundaries of my memory. It is less boring that way too. <laughs> so for the second imaginative painting, I drew a bread basket and like olive oil and like copper pot. <laughs> Those are edges I like never really drew before but I tried to draw them from my memory as best as I could but I think I did draw bread like once or twice so sorry for all those bread lovers out there I don't think I drew the croissant or baguette or loaf of bread well <laughs> but I tried I think the croissant didn't look that good it kind of looked big and I didn't really know how to draw the highlights for it to make it look glossy and crunchy so in the future I should study how to draw red <laughs> and I think I messed up this painting by making the shadows too dark um, so for my next painting in the future from imagination I will try to focus on getting the lighting and make it better and these paintings that I did this week from imagination are not the most pretty <laughs> unfortunately but I think the lighting situation that I was trying to go for especially for the red basket painting really try to reinforce what I learned from the practice paintings I did especially the picture with the green and white teapot with a plate of grape like in that one the lighting was coming from the front and I never draw that lighting situation since I prefer usually using a top lighting that comes from the right or left but in this one I tried to make the light come from the front and it was really interesting even though I messed up the shadows but I really did did have fun drawing the reflection on the copper pot. I feel like in the past I wouldn't have thought about adding the reflection of like the wooden spoon and stuff or like other objects nearby. I feel like I really learned a little bit more about reflection in general and I feel like in one day that will be helpful to me. <laughs> and yeah I still had a lot more practice to do but recently I I've been just trying to get out the thousand of ugly drawings out of my hand <laughs> because my art teachers one time said that to make one good drawing you need to make like thousands of bad ones and recently I find 
truth in that I'm just trying to get out the bad drawings out <laughs> Maybe one day I could paint beautiful things too At least I hope so So this week I really learned a lot from painting only still life setups It was a lot of fun I think I still need more practice especially with rendering and lighting But I feel like I will get better in time as long as I improve at least one person each practice painting um, and just doing a lot more in general but I really will try to incorporate everything I learned this week into my future drawings um, I think uh, looking at my mistakes and trying to learn from them will help me in the long run because these days I'm not focusing anymore on making things look exactly like the photo reference anymore so I feel like the danger of that though is create bad habits if I just create a lot without thinking so I will try to be more mindful of my mistakes when I notice them so I could fix them in the next painting but I learned a lot this week and it was really fun to paint still life paintings i feel like they're kind of underrated but super fun especially if you find good references to practice for i also made a video about my favorite artists that you can check out here in my next video of this series i will focus on painting the male face but i will try to paint more from imagination and memories and this thing i only day two i feel like i need to do way more than that <laughs> but thanks for watching and bye bye